Greetings, my name is Isa Bokar C. We are here to discuss Ramadan in respect of the prices of commodities. Therein we will discuss how to alleviate it or how to remove the yoke of expenditures from the shoulders of consumers, particularly heads of households, their spouses, their children, and also including people who have come to the Gambia as visitors, be it for the long term or for the short term. Uh, this appeal is not directed to Muslims only, because when it comes to humanitarian assistance, I can bet people in the Christian religion have also done a lot for non-Christians here and abroad. And I am one individual who can attest to that fact. So when it comes to that, I have suggestions with our Imams, with our respected and respectable scholars, with philanthropists on the ground and volunteers, we can change the dynamics. At this juncture, I am appealing to all Imams to focus their sermons on how to alleviate this yoke of expenditures or how to remove it from the shoulders of the consumers. One is we can copy from other countries in the world. Nearby neighbors like Senegal do it. What is the methodology? Imams would khutbah or deliver their sermons and invite members of their congregations to be bringing food to various mosques and masjids before breaking fast. Then there will be tapolim spread all over the place. There is no need for event planners here and there to ask to be paid money. No, 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 no. Because this is something we are doing. If there are event planners also who may wish to just join and then be blessed, that is highly welcome. But this is not a business expenditure. Oh, sorry, a business venture, I would say. Okay. There we will organize and tapolins will be spread. And then the food from members of the community or members of the congregations of these various masjids and mosques throughout the country, particularly in the greater Banyul area, would bring different dishes there. And then people who will come to the mosque to pray after breaking their fast, would all convert there, reassured of a rich diet, a balanced diet after praying. We are not doing it for anybody but for ourselves. You know, we have to live by what we identify ourselves with. The Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَمَنْ أَمِلَ سَالِهًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ Anything good you do is for your own soul. So that is one point. The other point is we are appealing to philanthropists. You see, people in this community confuse being rich and being a philanthropist. Being rich is where preparedness met opportunity, sometimes though in a responsible way, sometimes in a greedy way. And then you gather or you gain and keep for yourself. And then 
you will be the one enjoying the disparity between you and the poor. But there are people, when they access resources or they access success, what they think of is to care and share. That is the person I would call a philanthropist. None of them does it to be seen or to be heard or to be recognized. No. Those people also are invited to copy from a country like Egypt or other places in the world. You have a long table near your place and then make sure that you place food there. When it's time to break the fast, people will come or almost about to break their fast, they will come and take their package and go home. That is one way. The other way we can organize is Ramadan caravan. Ramadan caravan is you can have a big bus you own or a truck or a small car. Do not think it's only the rich people who can do it. No, the Ramadan caravan can be divided into clusters. If you have a small car like Isa Bokarsi, you can only carry maybe 10 sandwiches. That's what you can afford. Not every day, but any day you think you can afford it. You drive by and then see people who need it. Give it to them and go. Imagine where 100 people distribute 10 sandwiches. How much is that? The mathematicians can help us. Okay, so that way also it will be like Ramadan caravan or Ramadan clusters. The Ramadan caravan can charge itself with the responsibility. The, the big ones, maybe somebody richer can sponsor that. They will begin with RVH, Serekunda Hospital Clinic, and then go to Tanka Tanka Mile 2. Then expand it to what their ability, to the best of their ability up to Georgetown prisons. Or it can also include police stations where people are detained and make sure that there is statistics, respected statistics that the police officers also will be fed, but at the same time will be honest to feed the detainees, whether they are keeping fast or not. You're walking in the street, you meet somebody and you believe that they are really hungry, don't ask them, are you fasting? Feed them. That is it. So it can also go to the schools, the Ramadan caravan. You go to the schools, it's about to break fast. Some of the children out there may not be fasting, but their parents may be fasting. You never know when the ch child arrives at home when they, they are used to joining their parents during the meals, and then there is no meal. Teachers also can be part of it. But we should begin with those who are extremely helpless before we think about those who are earning salaries. This caravan can include military bases too. You don't need to go inside the military base. You can simply stand outside and then organize it with them because that's a different institution. It can go to the police barracks. You can stand outside and then organize it. Tell them that today this is the only amount I can bring. They would know who deserves it or not. And of course, it can go to villages too. But this cannot be done by an institution. It's a community approach. We all should contribute, particularly in the mosques though. That is the beginning of it. Let us begin this year by asking members of congregations of different mosques and masjids to be taking food to the masjids and mosques so that people can go there. After praying, they will eat. Senegal started it today. They have fought back. The vendors in the supermarkets and everywhere are finding it difficult. They are forced to reduce the prices because of that matter. So we are appealing to the imams to preach that members of their congregations would bring food around 5 p.m. downwards. And then by the time the imam prays and is ready, people will come out and eat to their satisfaction. The same thing can happen after the tarawih. This is what happens in Saudi Arabia itself, where all of us face calling it the Qibla. Thank you very much.